Welcome to our Sound for Video session for the 14th of January, 2017. And in this episode, what we're going to do is take another look at our short film that we've been working on, do a little bit more with the sound effects this time in our mix, and uh, we're getting a little bit closer. So let's go ahead and jump in here. So as you'll recall, we're, we made a short film about a guitar maker whose name is Joel Noland, and um, we showed you a lot of the kind of the principles of mixing the dialogue and the music last time. So we kind of, we used an EQ um, effect to kind of carve out a space in the music for the dialogue so that those two aren't competing too much. And then a lot of the effects here, we're going to essentially use the faders to kind of pull those behind the dialogue in most cases and uh, mix it all together. So let's, uh, let's jump in here. So first of all, we have this segment here where we start the interview. He's talking a little bit. And then we jump to this next part here. And let me just play this next part. My name is Joel. No okay, so he comes down the stairs and you'll notice that as he gets closer to the camera, his footsteps get louder. Now, if I go back here, <laughs> you can't see me. I'm actually standing up on the first floor or the main floor up here um, next to this banister off on this side. And I'm booming the microphone out over the stair stairwell, and I'm sort of cueing it along as he moves. So I'm actually I'm having the microphone follow him. The problem with that is, uh, and it's not, it's not a problem, but the thing that we want to modify here in post is that as he gets closer to the camera, we want it to make it sound closer at that point. Um, whereas where I was standing, it was kind of the same distance the whole time. So what we do is we do something called automation of the... Um, of this particular clip here, and you can see this diagonal line here. This line actually represents the fader. So you can see here overall it says minus six, but uh, mm, actually that may be part of our problem. So <laughs> I'm gonna change that back to zero. Let's play that again. Ability. My name is Joel Nolan. Okay, I think we'll go with that. Uh, we might we might pull it back a little bit more if we need to. But what we can do here is, again, as he gets closer to the camera, we want it to be louder. And as he's farther away from the camera, right about here, we want it to be quieter. And that's what this line does here. So you can see, you can actually create keyframes on this line here. So if I click there, you see that blue thing? That allows me to change the fader level. And you can see as we move it, it changes. So right now we're at zero. Um, but I actually don't want to do it in the middle here. I'm going to do it over here at the end. So I'm going to put a keyframe here, and I want to start it at 0 dB. And then I put another keyframe over here at the end. Whoops, wrong one. Undo that. And I want to automate that up to 15 dB. So let's see how that sounds now. Ability. My name is Joel No. Those are good crunchy stairs. I like those. <laughs> All right, so I think we're going to, that's kind of the general idea there. You'll also notice on each of the sound effects clips, um, I actually generally will fade in and fade out a little bit. And the way you do that, you grab this little, this little icon right here, and you can move that in and out. So I'll just do a very quick fade. So it's not a jarring um, when the new clip starts playing but it kind of fades in very smoothly. Now, before we go any farther, I forgot to explain some things here. Again, last time we talked a little bit more about how I organize things. So DX here is my dialogue track. We just have a single dialogue track. And then all these purple tracks here are the effects tracks that I have so far, and I'm not done yet, whoops. And then the red tracks down here at the bottom are the music left channel and music right channel. And then the last one here is the master bus. So this is the output, this is what it, this is what you're going to hear in the end, all mixed together. So um, that's I just wanted to explain that. So as we're going through here, you understand how I have things organized. Now, one of the things that our director said, again, our director was Levi Whitney, my friend. And um, he asked for some things in the sound design. And these are just a, like a quick list he made. When he's carrying... Uh, when he's carving the wood in slow motion, I would love to hear that. The football field and light shots add some sound of a high school football game. Any type of sound of a workbench environment. I was thinking on the shots where the text is explaining AS, which is his condition. Um, the humming of the lights from the stairs, anything that would immerse you in his world. 
um, his hand as it rubs across the top of the guitars, and we're going to come across this stuff here a little later here, and the most important, whatever Kuju wants, so go crazy with it. <laughs> so he's giving me some pretty, some pretty good freedom here to do something awesome, so we won't let him down. So the next thing we had, now back to production day, you'll notice that some of these, actually most of these lights are not on. We actually unplugged those because they were making a racket. Um, they were very noisy fluorescent lights. Um, it turns out that it the that Levi, in terms of lighting design, just wanted to use the windows to light to give it a little bit more of a moodier feel to it, and um, and we also wanted to get the noise from these lights taken care of so that we could record the actual effects that we were recording there that we're going to come across here in a little bit. So, and then we could add that kind of buzzing noise back later on if we you know to taste. And so that's essentially what we've done here. This clip right here is the workshop sound. <laughs> and and technically, um, to be honest, it wasn't what I recorded there. I actually ended up using a different um, sound effect that was recorded by um, Frank Serafini, in fact. And this is actually an appliance refrigerator hum. <laughs> and you'll see here, let's play for you a little segment. My name is Joel Nolan, and I'm um... We grew up all over the place, I come from a big family. I was playing football, I loved playing football. That was my sport of choice. Okay, we'll stop there. So it's just adding a little bit of room tone, a little bit of a buzz in the background. Again, it's a workshop, so you kind of want it to sound a little bit gritty. You know, not too bad, but, but a little bit, and it's very subtle. You can see here on this track, I've pulled the fader back 23 decibels. So this is actually a pretty loud one. In fact, if we solo it here, you'll hear it. Okay, so that's what we're, we're working with there. Um, all right, so next here, um, this is actually a sound effect that we did record on the spot. And let me just play this part for you as he picks up the guitar tuning, um, the tuners. Football, that was my sport of choice. I just loved it. But when I was running the football in ninth grade. Okay, so that was, you know, again, pretty subtle, but it's it kind of, it helps to draw you in a little bit as the goal there. And again, in this case, I want to, Fade these in and out just a touch. Okay, next up we have the football field. Now, this is sort of a, sort of a, it's almost like a dream sequence. Not exactly, but it's, you know, kind of helping to tell the story. But there's no one at the football field as he filmed it. But yet we have the sound of a crowd. So, you know, it kind of, um, that's the effect the director wanted. I think it works pretty well. Here's an example. The football in ninth grade, I noticed a little stiffness in my ankles when I would cut real hard and someone was chasing me, trying to run me down. And, and then one, one morning I woke up. And you can see it was sort of a, it's a recollection. It's him telling his story from many years ago. And so the sound is there. And yet um, there's almost a sort of eerie feeling where the football field is completely empty. So it's kind of a, kind of an interesting um, effect overall. So hopefully I, hopefully he'll like that. We're going to go ahead and give him a cut of this here in a little bit here and see. All right, so now he has some explaining parts. I don't know if this is the final, um, it's a little hard to read, but I don't know if this is the final way he's going to do that. He's gonna find some way to do some exposition here, ex essentially explaining. Joel was diagnosed with ankylo ankylosing spondylitis, AS, at the age of 15. So that's his, that's the condition that he suffers from. Um, and then we, because it's going back to the workshop, we went ahead and put another clip of Again, that refrigerator hum in there. Again, in an effort to t kind of pull you into the workshop and feel like you're there. I learned to live with it. You know, I had to, I never was the type to, to sit still no matter what. So, I... so he's telling more of his story here. Next up, we have the chisel. <laughs> um, let me just show you, or yeah, I'll play, play a little part of it here for you. More more things with my hands. I was 11 and we all came down with the mumps, stuck in this trailer park in the- Okay, so this one was a was a little bit of a challenge for me, <laughs> um, but it was a good experience and it's not perfect yet. I think I'll probably get to do some more work on it and I may EQ this some more, but um, this was the challenging part. He recorded this on a Sony A7S II, I think it was. 
pretty sure it's the A7S2, not this A7R2. So um, he shot it, I believe, at, I think at 120 frames per second. I'm not really sure what that camera is capable of again. <laughs> and I, I don't remember for sure. But in any case, slow. He, he shot it at a high frame weight, and then, of course, he slowed it way down because he wanted that kind of dramatic effect of the chisel in slow motion. The problem is, is that the sound was recorded also in real time. Um, but then we had to slow it down some. So let me just create a new track here and show you uh, how this all worked here. We're just going to call this temporary so I don't mess myself up in the long run. But then um, we took this audio here. I think it was this chisel slow. Let me just solo this. And let's stop right when he starts chiseling, the, the big chisel. I mean, the close-up. Okay, right here. So here's where I want that to sound. So if I put this in, the actual recording, the production recording, it sounds like this. That doesn't work. <laughs> Clearly it doesn't match up. Um, so what we do is we actually come up to effects, um, sorry, clip, stretch, stretch mode and whoops we're going to do it for this clip right here select your clip then come up to clip stretch stretch mode and we're going to change it to rendered okay so what that means now is we can actually just stretch this out by grabbing this tiny little thing it's hard to see here let me zoom in a little bit so we can see it better okay see these little white triangles in the on the right and on the left you can actually just grab those and stretch the sound. So that's cool. So let's come back up here to the start of the chisel. And I want to line the, the actual waveform up to that. Let's see how it sounds now. Okay, we missed it. It's a little too early. Okay, it's still not slow enough. It has to re-render there. Okay, that's better. Timing-wise, that's better. So now what I need to do is actually cut these apart and spread them out a little bit. So I'm going to just bring in my razor tool here, cut that move this one over and we'll come back to that one. All right, so let's see what we have again. Let's play that. Okay, it's generally in sync, but it sounds like a really, it doesn't sound right at all, does it? <laughs> so what I do is I highlight this and I come over here into my properties and you can see here we have the stretch um, properties and we can change some of these settings here. So I think the thing is that we need to change this pitch by quite a bit. We need to lower it because it sounds kind of twangy and high pitched. So we want to reduce it, um, let's say maybe minus 30 semitones and let's see how that goes. That's better, um, definitely better. Now there's some more things we could potentially do to this as well. Um, let me just, Open this one here. We're going to add an equalizer. Let's maybe go back to our default here. I think I want to add some here in the lower frequencies. Let's see how that goes. Okay, we'll close that for now. Come back here. Okay, that's working pretty well. So again, I want to fade in and fade out so it's not so obvious. Okay, that's, that's, we'll stop there. <laughs> There's a lot more that could be done to really kind of fine tune that. But in general terms, that's um, some of the things, one thing you can do to slow the sound down to match with slow motion um, filming slow motion footage. So that's uh, that's one thing I did there. So let me go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and remove this track then. And we're going to delete this selected track. Okay. So let's squeeze these back down again. This is um, 
open up a little bit here. I've been doing more, more things with my hands. I was 11 and we all came down with the mumps, stuck in this trailer park in the summer in Arkansas and all that was on TV was the Nixon hearings. So I got a box. Okay, I don't know if you saw that or heard that here. Well, he's in this sort of far away um, shot and or a much wider shot he is still working with the chisel here and what i did is i had to cut and paste and kind of chop up a whole bunch of audio that i had uh, recorded during that session and um, you can see here if we zoom in a little bit let's just do that you see all these yellow lines those are crossfades and so actually what happens as you move the footage it automatically puts a crossfade in there which is really nice and so you can see I just cut, sliced a bunch of them up and put them there so that they would sync up with the actual footage. What was on TV was the Nixon hearings. So I got a... And then, of course, I went minus 9 dB on that. Let's pull that up just a touch. I'm going to go to maybe minus 6. What was on TV was the Nixon hearings. So I got a box of toothpicks and started building things with the... Okay, so there was another thing we did. Let's see. Oh, yeah, we have two more chisels sounds here toothpick like these little tent yurt building type things and then we moved to california and i didn't have any friends at first so okay what do we have next next up we have next we have the bandsaw and bent them and made these big kayaks out of these dowels and then covered them with the skin like the uh, now this is one that's a little tricky you have to decide how much <laughs> of that you want i pulled the fader back by three decibels I don't want this to start competing too much with the dialogue and the music, but I want it to feel like you're there a little bit. So it's pretty subtle. I was and bent them and made these big kayaks out of these dowels and then covered them with the skin like the um, Inuit type kayaks. I think. Okay. Next up, we have uh, a sound effect here that we actually recorded while this was being shot. So. Fortunately, this was this was a pretty straightforward one. It's, I'm just dropping this in here, and it was just a matter of getting the volume right for this particular track. You know, doing projects like that, working with my hands. I was watching a... Again, very subtle. Now, this is one that we actually, that he did as a B-roll shot. I was actually off doing something else at this point. <laughs> um, so I did not get the sanding sound. So what I've done here is I have essentially... Um, taking some notes here. So there's some Foley I need to record. One is sanding. The next one right after that, you'll see it in this clip in just a minute, is his hand brushing across the wood. And then there would be a final one where he has actually some cloth where he's rubbing the guitar, sort of polishing it after it's been stained. So um, those are going to drop in here. And you can see on my notes here, what I did is I actually put the times where those go. So it'll make my Foley session a little easier. What I'll do is I'll render a version of this out have that with me probably on my phone or something like that. And then I'll go ahead and play it back. And while I'm playing it back, I'll record the Foley. And then we'll come back and drop that in. All right, let's see what's next here. We're back in the workshop. So again, I have that workshop clip here. So I got a book from the library, and read up on it and built one. It turned out pretty good. So I built another one and then Okay, fade in and out. Again, back to the workshop where we're going to have some more of that sound. All right, and then one last time in the workshop. <laughs> oh, actually, here's some other pieces that we put in as well. I think we talked about these a little bit when he has the spinning wheel to polish the guitars. And when I make something, I'm fulfilling that need. And when it's done, it So we do that a couple times to, to make music. So there we go. So that's that's kind of the next step that we're taking here uh, in terms of mixing the sound and doing the sound design for this piece here. There may be some other pieces. What I would do is just run through it again a few more times. Um, and this last part is really just sort of a an interesting way. He did a really, I think, a really nice job cutting <laughs> in the end here. And I'm not going to spoil it all for you now, but we'll come back to that at another time in the future. So there's another look at doing some mixing for short films in terms of sound effects. Um, obviously, we did the dialogue and the music last time. This time worked a little bit more on sound effects. We're going to, uh, in a future episode here in the next couple of weeks, probably, possibly next week or the week after, 
Um, we're going to go ahead and record some of that fully, mix that in here, and then what we'll do is we'll actually render the entire mix out, and then we'll do our loudness normalizing and deliver that back to Levi and uh, get his feedback and see if we need to do any more revisions. So hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if um, you have any projects coming up, make sure <laughs> that you get out there, keep your mind open, and learn as much as you can. Take care, everybody. We'll talk to you again next week.